So have you guys seen Justice League yet? Yeah, don't go see it. All right, now look at this movie. <laughs> like, here's the thing. Um, I don't mind DC's previous vision with the whole dark and gritty approach to it. I mean, are they perfect movies? No. Or are they terrible movies? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think they're completely awful. I mean, except Suicide Squad. But to some people, they are. With Man of Steel, I really believe it sets up that entire vision that DC wanted to go for. That is until they put out Batman v Superman that adopts that same tone. And because of that critical reception, Warner Brothers issued all those reshoots for Suicide Squad to capture a more lighthearted tone. And now we have an Oscar winning movie for hair styling and makeup. Thank you for the reshoot, Suicide Squad. And ever since Suicide Squad, DC just wanted to go for a more fun and comic booky vibe to it to really keep that streak going. And after seeing the Justice League, it really struck a chord with me that I really believe DC has no idea what they're doing. Look, and you can bash on Man of Steel and Batman v Superman all you want. To some level, I can agree with some of the criticisms, but at the same time, there's just always something in those films that keeps drawing me back based on how different they are in the superhero genre. Now, does different mean that they're always good? No. I mean, but personally for me as a viewer, I find it interesting to see how DC is able to take some of the most iconic heroes and place them on a more grounded and more human level. And with those movies, I can differentiate between what is Marvel and what is DC, but after movies such as Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman and now the Justice League, What's the difference now? Now, is there really hope in the superhero genre that a filmmaker is able to place their vision without any studio interference and having some, any unique spin on them whatsoever? After the Justice League, I really don't think so anymore. Now, just a bit of a backstory before we go into how much of a train wreck Justice League really is. So, during post-production, the original director, Zack Snyder, him and his wife had to leave the project due to their daughter's suicide. And DC thought it would be a wonderful idea to bring in another director to finish the project and assign any reshoots that the movie needed to fit within the story, and that's Avengers director Joss Whedon. And I was so worried, I was like, oh my god, like, just like everybody else, we were asking, is this going to affect the entire duration of the movie? And sure enough, surprise, surprise, it does. And then within the Justice League, it just clearly shows. I'm just so stunned on how much it's on, it's on the same level as Suicide Squad. It, it, you know, I don't even want to rewatch Suicide Squad to confirm that. Fuck that. I'm not going to do that. Justice League overall was one huge incompetent mess. I mean, it's so clear that Joss Whedon barely had any time to work around with what Zack Snyder did to make it one consistent film. The movie was supposed to be like around three hours long, and I myself would not mind a three hour long Justice League movie because you got to set up these characters. You got to set them up as a team because half of them don't even have their own solo movies yet. Plus, to be invested in them as characters characters emotionally and how they're structured as a team, especially for the mass audiences that Warner Brothers is trying to go for, do it for them because half of them may not even know who these characters really are. Now if they would have done that, it probably would have been a serviceable and most likely enjoyable Justice League movie, but thanks to the sudden hiring of Joss I Hate My Own Villain Whedon, we get what we get now. And that being a hour and 45 minute long movie or something like that. I mean, I'm not blaming Joss Whedon entirely, but it, it's just so clear that WB is jumping onto the bandwagon of trying to make things more lighthearted and more fun. Just, they're cutting everything down. Don't do that shit. And you can clearly tell which is Zack's vision and which is Joss Whedon's villain on just how they set these characters up and some of them don't even serve the story at all. Now, a perfect example that I saw in the beginning of the film was when Wonder Woman was saving those people from those briefcase gun dudes that held those people hostage. It really serves no purpose to the story rather than Wonder Woman saying a joke later on. What did you do this weekend, Diana? Me? Nothing very interesting. It was just mindless action for the sake of mindless action. It really has no effect on what it does for the story and what it does to the team overall. I mean, you can argue that Batman kind of has that scene in the beginning too, but the thing with Batman and that scene with the parademon whatever, um, it sets up the story on how they bring in those creatures and the villain later on. I mean, was it horribly done? Yeah, absolutely. Good God, it was bad, but it... At least it served a purpose. So the movie keeps jumping around, uh, showing all these characters of the Justice League, shows Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Cyborg, Aquaman, and just all this shit is happening. And then 
just the first 30 minutes was so bad. And a lot of it had to do with probably my most hated villain in a comic book movie probably ever, and that is the dude named Steppenwolf. His entire character is literally, oh, I'm bad guy, bad guy needs power, I want to rule the world and defeat Justice League. That's pretty much it. He was this one note, really boring villain that just the CG on him also was god awful. And you would think a big blockbuster like Justice League that has like a $300 million budget would serve some pretty decent, believable CGI. And for this Steppenwolf and everything else in the movie, it looks like it was straight up from a PlayStation 2 emulator. So a bunch of shit is still happening and they bring Superman back in which his face that they've done with him, it's now a meme. But funny enough, right when the Justice League brings Superman back and they had to basically fight him, that was probably the most enjoyable scene out of the entire film. I had a pretty damn good time watching it. And then you get to Wonder Woman and Batman and everybody else cracking jokes that really wasn't entirely funny. And then it's like, Joss Whedon, everybody. But then we get to the main battle. We get to the moment that everybody has been waiting for. The Justice League in its entirety. They are finally throwing down on the big screen. They have to fight Steppenwolf. But by the time that Superman shows up, it's like placing a tactical nuke. And you know that the other team is just done for. And you just have to lay there and accept it. And by the time it's over, you're like... Really? That's all there is. Two minutes of Superman fighting. Like, one, two, done. Steppenwolf dies, and he dies in the most generic, villainous way, and he's just like, no, as he's just dying, all the parademons are fucking roasting him. Then all the world setup that Steppenwolf did to that one town somewhere in the world just turns into flowers and that's literally the end of the movie. It's so clear that DC is trying to play catch up with Marvel and fitting into the social norm of what it means to be a superhero movie nowadays. Because a lot of the times they are filled with comedy, they are a little bit lighthearted and also family friendly, and if you're the type of viewer that likes that sort of thing, then you know what, I'm glad that you do. However, it doesn't take the most seasoned movie veteran to look at DC and go like, you know what, they're trying way too hard to be like Marvel and they're really going against everything that they have set their universe up to. And you know what, I really dug with what they were doing earlier. I liked how they are going through that dark and gritty approach to it. They are being different than most superhero films, even through the harsh criticisms that people were giving them online. You know what, I stuck by them. I stood up for them. But now, I, I just can't anymore. And after watching Justice League, it's clear that DC has now become their competitors and they have joined the ranks of becoming a very generic superhero movie company. That's not kind of, it's not really what you want for a movie. You want them to be different from the rest. You don't want them to be the same thing over and over. And that's kind of what Marvel's turning into. And that's also what DC is going for as well. But you know what? This made me realize something that due to the sudden shift of directors and seeing how that turned out, I'm kind of scared on how the Han Solo movie is going to be. I mean, we all kind of, figure that was going to be bad, but this just adds more to just the amount of shit that's probably going to get later in the future. But you know, those are my thoughts on the Justice League, and I just had a terrible time watching it, um, besides that one Superman throwdown that they had in the middle of the movie, doesn't make up for the rest of the film, so I, I thought Justice League was absolutely terrible. If you haven't seen it, don't go see it, but if you're a fan of these um, characters, I I guess go see it. I'm not sure if you're going to like it or not. I I wouldn't suggest it, but I want to know what your guys' thoughts on Justice League are for those poor souls who have seen it. Have you liked it? Have you hated it? Did you think it was okay? Whatever your thoughts are, let's have a discussion down below, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>